This episode of Lifehacker is brought to you by Squarespace. Welcome back to Lifehacker Summer Series. Here's what we're looking at this week. Adam Dotches is going to walk us through some of the best hidden features in Mac OS X Lion. We're speeding up your computer's boot time, tweaking Google Plus to fit our needs, and more. All right, so let's get started. Last week, Apple released the latest version of its operating system, Mac OS X Lion, and you probably have heard about a lot of the big tentpole features, but there are actually 250 plus secret features hidden inside. Here are some of our favorites. When you make a new folder on the desktop, now you don't have to make the folder and then drag items into it. You can just select the items you want, go to the file menu, and choose new folder with selection. That'll move everything into that new folder, and you can name it whatever you want. Lion added a lot of security and privacy features, which is found unsurprisingly in your security and privacy settings and system preferences. So clicking that, one really neat one is that you can decide which applications can see your location. So you have to authenticate in order to actually be able to edit those settings. But once you're in here, you can choose uh, whether you want any applications to be able to do it at all. If you don't, just uncheck that box. But if you have approved one that you want to remove, just delete it from this list here. Adding a new event to iCal is really easy. You just click the plus button, and then you can type in whatever you're doing. Dinner at 5.30 p.m. with grandparents, because who else would eat that early? Hit enter, and there it is, it's added to your day. Computer freezes are annoying, but they happen, and Lion has a good way of dealing with them now. If you go to the energy saver settings in your system preferences, you'll find a checkbox that says restart automatically if the computer freezes. Just check it, and you will be brought back to normal if there is a freeze. What's probably the coolest feature that is hidden in Mac OS X Lion is the ability to sign PDF documents with your FaceTime camera. All you have to do is take a piece of paper and write down your signature and then click this button to show the toolbar, then this button to create a signature from your FaceTime camera. This will bring up FaceTime, there I am. And you just hold your signature up to the camera like this and it will automatically register it eventually. There we go. On your computer, you click accept. And then you'll be able to add your signature to the given document. This week on Lifehacker, we welcomed Apple's latest operating system into the world. We took a look at all the new features in it, including the multitask friendly mission control, the iOS style application launcher launchpad, full screen apps, and a whole lot more. We all hate rebooting our computers, mostly because the minute or two it takes to reboot can feel like an eternity. Whitson takes a look at 10 of the best methods for speeding up your computer's boot time, with suggestions ranging from BIOS tweaks to installing a solid state drive, which is, incidentally, our favorite hardware upgrade. If you followed one of our guides on how to build a Hackintosh and have to stay up on the bleeding edge, we also walked through how to get Lion up and running on your machine. As with any operating system upgrade, you should fully back up your hard drive before doing anything. Uh, you'll need to make sure you meet all the system requirements, and then use Tony Mac's XMove program to create an installer partition. It sounds a little complicated, but it's not too difficult, uh, and the full guide is up on the site. Finally, we highlighted our favorite tricks and tools to make the most of Google+. We've talked about Google's new social network for a few weeks now, but now that third-party developers have had some time to play around with it, you can update Google Plus status from anywhere, tweak the interface to your liking, and give your profile a nice vanity URL. For more of our top posts, check out lifehacker.com slash highlights.
So it's recommended that everyone drink eight eight ounce glasses of water every day. But one size doesn't fit all, you should check with your doctor for your personalized H2O needs. Now figuring out how much water you need to drink is the easy part. The hard part is actually drinking that water so that by say 9 o'clock, you don't have to drink five glasses of water to get back on track. So I came up with a little visual trick to stay on track. Alright, now step one, assuming you need less than two liters of water a day, Get yourself a little jug. This is about 64 ounces. Now, personally, I'm a fan of these Blue Wave BPA-free bottles. Uh, whatever you get, just make sure it's got a sturdy cap and it's clear. Step two, do a little math. Take the number of ounces you need to drink every day and divide it by the number of hours you're awake. For example, I'm drinking about 64 ounces a day and I'm typically awake between 7 and 11 o'clock, which is about 16 hours. And this comes out to four ounces an hour. Step three, take four ounces of water or whatever your result is and pour it into the jug. Now take a Sharpie and mark the water level and call it 10 p.m. or one hour before you typically go to sleep. Take another four ounces of water, pour it into the jug, mark it, repeat. You see what I'm getting at here? Eventually you're gonna work your way back to the time you wake up. Now each of these lines represent an hour you're awake. This will help you keep your intake more or less on track. The bad news is you're gonna have to carry this jug around everywhere you go. The good news is after about a week or two of jugging it, you can probably ditch it because you'll be accustomed to how much you need to drink and when. So that's it. Cheers. Have a tip that you'd like to share with Lifehacker? Uh, send us a video response to show at lifehacker.com or respond to this video on YouTube. Hungry? Thirsty? The refreshment stand is open. Squarespace is the fast and easy way to create a high quality blog, portfolio, or any kind of website. If you ever need any help along the way, Squarespace provides every member with amazing support, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. You can start your website or blog by choosing from tons of professionally designed templates, and then add content, and manage comments from anywhere thanks to Squarespace's mobile apps. Many of the internet's highest traffic web pages are powered by Squarespace, not to mention many of the personal pages of Revision 3 hosts and personalities. You can get a two week free trial and 10% off your order when you go to www.squarespace.com and enter the coupon code LIFEHACKER7 at checkout. And now, it's showtime. All right, it's time for the downloads of the day. Let's see what we've got. First up is TunnelBear, which is a free VPN service app for Windows and Mac, and it lets you tunnel into the UK or the US. So for example, you could access Hulu or Netflix while you're across the pond. Next, we have Desktop Nova for Linux, which changes up your wallpapers at a set interval so you'll always have something new to look at on your desktop. Custom Explorer Toolbar for Windows lets you customize the toolbar on Windows Explorer so you can add and remove whatever you want. If you've ever wanted to control your mouse with your keyboard, Chemo is a Mac app that can help you do just that. And lastly, we've got CyberGhost VPN, which is a Windows VPN app to anonymize your web surfing. Here's what we talked about on our YouTube channel this week. We learned a handy shortcut for collaborating with friends or coworkers in Google Docs. And like, look at this, legal media delivery service. Okay, first of all, that sentence doesn't even make any sense, but servants is not even a word. Just hit Control-Alt-M on Windows or Command-Option-M on Mac when you've got some text highlighted and you can leave a comment instantly without having to dig through those pesky menus. Next up, Whitson showed off how to save addresses as shortcuts on Android home screens so you can navigate to your house, apartment, or some other place that you go a lot without having to poke through and enter in an address manually. Finally, Whitson demonstrated how to turn an old computer into a network backed up streaming or torrenting machine with the network attached storage uh, operating system FreeNAS. Uh, there are videos that show you how to share your drive with a desktop, how to back up your drive, uh, how to stream media, and way more. Check out the full post on Lifehacker and the videos on YouTube for a visual guide. Alright, that's it for this week. We'll see you next time. <laughs>